Hey, welcome. Tuesday night training. This is Brian Johnson coming to you live from Austin, Texas. And I don't usually teach on Tuesday nights, but when I do, I make sure we have a great time. So tonight we're actually going to be continuing part two of my series, Fat Burning Secrets and the Keys to Unlock Your Body. So if you did not catch my first series, part one, make sure you go back and check it. It's still on my wall on Think Great, Lose Weight, where you're at now. And here's the important part of it. You are going to learn and you are going to discover the important forces that are acting all around us that we cannot see that are making a bigger impact in your life than what you actually can see, which is the crazy part. So, welcome Ms. Audrey Nicole. So if this is your first time joining one of my broadcasts, just type in the little message box below, first timer. If I don't catch you live, I go back and respond to people all week long. So we have open dialogue conversations during all my trainings all week long. So if you have a question, put it in the, ba in the space below and I will answer it for you. And if this is your first time, welcome. For those of my veterans, I appreciate you and I always appreciate you showing up and having an amazing time. You are in a secure space. So let's begin. For those of you that are hopping on for the first time, make sure you go up into step one and make sure you hop on my email list. Get my seven free videos and so you can also get my free workbook so you can follow along with my trainings for all of your notes so you can write down your ahas and all that fun stuff. What's up, Miss Lisa Locker and Jennifer Cole? So tonight, I will be completing at 8.30 exactly. So with that in mind, let's get started because I have a limited amount of time tonight. So let's have some fun, most importantly. My invitation to you is to open your mind. What's up, Jen? Open your mind to what I'm going to share with you because I'm taking all of the over 100,000 hours I invested, well over 60,000 people I've been blessed to support and serve and a lot of wisdom and experience in my own life in the form of pain sometimes uh, that I'm going to be sharing with you on how you can be successful on unlocking the dream body that you always wanted and always choose and always desired to have. So here we go. So I'm on part two of my series. I'm talking about setting your goals and getting clear on what your expectations are. Unless you are clear on what you're choosing to create in your life, there's no way you're going to be able to measure it. And there's no way you're going to know where you're trying to end up at. For example, if you're going on vacation... Would you agree that unless you understood where your final destination point was, it's kind of hard to map out what your success route is? Now, even if you know where you're going, there's going to be turns and detours and things because that's just life. Nothing is perfect. You don't live in a vacuum. So my encouragement to you is to be open-minded. Be willing to give yourself permission to forgive yourself when you fall off the wagon and permission to recommit when you do so because it's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when you fall off the wagon. I'm speaking from personal experience, okay? Now, getting clear on your goals. Here is a couple of equations that I use. What's up, Jake? Here's a couple of equations that I use to construct people's nutrition programs. Because here's the thing. I have people that come to me from all over the world to help me help them become the best versions of themselves. From doing their nutrition programs to helping them with their mindset to helping them get clear on what they're exactly looking to create and helping them to get clear on where they're sabotaging themselves. And these are two of the very same formulas that I use to get people started. Okay, so here they are. You can go on Google and find them yourself. But here's what I use, okay? One of them is the Harris-Benedict equation. It's an equation you can go on Google and you can get. It's called the Harris-Benedict equation. The next one is called the Catch McCradle or McCardle, either one of those. And if you have my notes, you'll know what I'm talking about. All this stuff is in there. So you can go through there and check it out. And you can find these out for yourself. These are the exact things that I use. Because here's the deal. You may be like, well, Brian, you sure are giving away all your tools. I'm giving away every one of them. The key is understanding how to use them. Understanding how to shift when things aren't making sense and when you're not getting the data that you're looking to create on your goals and understanding what to do and how to do it. I could give away everything under the, in my kitchen sink and unless you know how to implement it and execute it and measure the data and make choices, it doesn't matter what I give you. There's still going to be room for error because you don't understand the things that I do. So that's why it's important to have someone who understands these things to help you along your journey. Naturally, I'm sure you would agree with that, right? What's up, Heidi? All right, so here you go, okay? 
Let's talk about step number two, measuring your success. It is important to understand that your weight scale does not give you accurate information. It's not going to tell you if you're burning body fat. It's not going to tell you if you're, ba- if you're gaining muscle or if you're burning muscle tissue. So using your scale as your primary methodology of measuring your success is a surefire way to get depressed. Okay? So understand that. Make some different choices and try some different things. One of them being using a body fat device. I have, let's see what I have here. I'll show you. Show you. Hold on. I've got a couple. So here's a couple of different ones that I use. This is one that I use, I get pinched with. This is one for, that I use, this one will also help to mitigate when you are dehydrated so your body's not showing up as, yeah right Penny? Uh, it's not showing up as a body fat gain because you're dehydrated. Here's another one I use, I'm not too fond of it, it's called a Sculpt. You literally can take this thing and spray some water on the sensors and put it on your body I don't particularly like it to be honest with you because it doesn't give me accurate feedback consistently which I have found and it it just doesn't. I'm kind of irritated with it. And then I've also got a $3,000 gadget that I use to measure my clients here in Austin. They all are going to have their skews and their challenges. The important thing is to find something that you can use consistently that will give you consistent data to make consistent choices off of because really that's all you're looking for. You can figure with any type of a device, you're going to have anywhere from a 2 to 5% variance in the information that you're getting. Just understand that going into it. Really all you're looking for is something to give you feedback to find out whether what you're doing is working or not. In body analysis. What's up, Joel Cuellar? Now, Joel Cuellar has got an amazing machine over here at uh, Pure Line Nutrition off the lake line, I use his gadget. He's got a heavy duty gadget that you hop on. It's got these little hand scales. I have to say his is probably one of the most accurate ones outside of autopsy and hydrostatic weighing. So uh, thanks for popping in, Joel, and reminding me on that one. So if you are interested in getting your body fat checked out, you can definitely go see Joel at Pure Line Nutrition off of lake line uh, in 183 here in Austin, Texas. And they have an amazing machine. I used to go there and get mine checked pretty frequently. So check Joel out for sure. The key is finding something that you can use, that you feel confident in, and just understand you're going to have a little bit of variance in all of them. Just find something that works for you. What's up, Tessa? Welcome. Hey, Jim. Handheld scale. Uh, Yeah, there's a few different ones. So try that stuff out. Okay? So here's the next thing to understand, and this is a really important concept. This is very important because people freak out when this happens, okay? So if you are eating carbohydrates, it's important to understand one gram of carbohydrates will yield or your body will uptake or hold 2.7 grams of water in your muscle or intracellularly or extracellularly as water retention depending upon if you're eating a lot of sodium. So understand that when you have more carbohydrates and you get on the scale, You're going to put on weight. It's water weight. It doesn't mean you've gotten fatter, although there's a possibility that could happen depending upon what your diet's like. Understanding that when you do that, you're going to mentally jack yourself. So just understand and take it with a grain of salt that that's actually what's going on. Okay. Now on the same token, there's a big, big, uh, a lot of stuff going around in ketosis and around intermittent fasting and things like that. And honestly, they all have their places. You just get to find what works for you. Here's some here's some information for you. If you're doing ketosis, which means you're doing more fats and more proteins and less carbohydrates, here's what happens. As you get rid of more glycogen or carbohydrates in your body, meaning your body is using up that fuel source, What happens as you burn one molecule of glucose or carbohydrate? That's 2.7 grams of water that goes out of your body as well. So you may notice when you are doing a ketogenic diet or a low carbohydrate diet, you're going to pee more. You're peeing more because your body is utilizing your carbohydrates. Therefore, the water is expelling out of your system. If you eat asparagus and diuretics, 
Water is going to expel out of your system. So just understand that it's a constant ebb and flow. My personal opinion is check your body fat once every seven days. See what kind of accurate data you're getting. See what kind of decisions you're making and then make some choices. I personally have been using the MyFitnessPal for the last two, probably two weeks now. It's been very helpful for me because it's been helpful for me for tracking things and helping me to get more clear on where nutrients are coming in and where my calories are getting out of line. It really depends on how successful you choose to be. If you choose to be your best, track your nutrients. That's the only way you're going to be able to make a decision and make choices when things aren't going right. And you can understand what to do to change them. And understand, I consistently am quote unquote dieting. I'm a seasoned dieter, meaning I'm constantly measuring foods and eating things and doing my best to get in better shape. And it's really a matter of how great do you want to look. That's it. Looking great is not for everyone. And honestly, most people aren't willing to do the work because I assure you, it's work. It's a job. It's a constant commitment of where am I going to be? What am I going to eat? Are they going to have food I can eat? Are they going to have things that I can make and mimic and do? And it's a constant thought pattern of being successful. So if you choose to be successful, understand it's going to require some effort. It's going to require some planning. It's going to require you working with a professional. Joel's great about this. Joel's helped me with my nutrition before. It's going to require you having someone help you consistently. I have people that help me with my nutrition program and I coach people on nutrition. It's, it's, yeah, Joel's right. Joel's also competed. We both have and he's, he's a heavyweight dude. So he gets it with all the training and everything. It's a huge mental game because guess what? As a professional, when I get on the scale, and it doesn't say what I would like for it to say, I am pissed off. I can be frustrated for the better part of my day. And if I let that get to me, it will totally thrash my day. So you have to get really good at giving yourself permission to forgive yourself. You have to get really good at loving yourself. You have to get really good at being objective, meaning taking the emotions out of it as much as possible. It's your body, obviously, so it's a challenge. But just giving yourself permission when things aren't going right, take a step back and say, okay, where can I improve? Who can I call for advice? Who can I get valuable wisdom from? My encouragement to you is to not listen to everyone. Everyone does not know what they're talking about. There's only a select few people that I will listen to and take advice from when it comes to my nutrition, when it comes to my finances, when it comes to my spiritual connection, when it comes to my coaching, whatever. Find those people in your life and find those pillars of people in those different areas and stick to them and no one else. Everyone has an opinion. Opinions are like buttholes. Some people are bigger and some people stink worse than others. So just take that with a grain of salt. Is it harder for someone over 40 to lose weight? Harder, it seems like yeah, my metabolism seems to be non-existent. I can, can kind of confirm with that, that as I have gotten elder, I'm 38 years young, approaching 39 fast. And I can tell you that from 26 to 30, my metabolism changed. From 30 to 35, my metabolism changed. From 35 to 38, my metabolism has changed. I've had my blood levels checked. My glucose levels suck, which means when I have carbohydrates, my body does not respond well. My thyroid is functioning on the low end of normal, which sucks, which means when I have something like that, my body completely responds. It has been a real challenge for me to get my body down to what I know is available for me. And I'm committed to not stopping until I get to that point. If it takes me my entire life to figure that out, then that's what it is. And that's what I'm committed to do. My encouragement is to find what works for you. And here's the important part. You get to start somewhere. Just start. Just start. You're going to constantly make movements and make change and make modifications. And unless you start, there's no way to modify it. And there's no way to make adjustments. So just start and just measure your, measure your progress in a week. See how you feel, make some adjustments, see how your body's responding, see how your energy levels are, see how you're sleeping, see if you're getting hangry, maybe try some intermittent fasting, like I'm going to integrate some fasting this week because I'm honestly tired of eating all my food. I'm really getting frustrated because I've been doing more vegan and vegetarian stuff and honestly, it's a challenge hitting my numbers, meaning hitting 7 ounces of protein and staying at 50 grams of fat and staying at a certain amount of carbs. It's a challenge. I... 
I'm going to do some fasting because I enjoy not eating until 12. It saves me a ton of money. It's a heck of a lot easier for me to do. It's three to four less hours a week. It's four to six hundred dollars less food a month. So you get to find what works for you. My encouragement is just to start. And sometimes you may have to start on five or six meals a day to get your metabolism boosted back up. Very important. I'm human just like the rest of you. And if you think that I don't have my challenges, you are wrong. I'm telling you right now, I have my challenges. And I love myself. I give myself permission to thrive. Like literally right now, I really would like to hang up the phone call and go eat a pizza. Can I be honest with you? My body feels bloated. I've had more sodium and normal foods because I'm having more processed vegan and vegetarian foods. And I feel fatter than normal even though I've been eating foods. I would like to go eat a pizza. That's being truthful. <laughs> and there are times when I go have a pizza. Or I'll go to the movies and do my deal, right? It's important for you to have a reward meal. Like, let's talk about that for a second, okay? It is really, 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 really important for you to have a reward meal, depending upon where you're at in your program, once to sometimes twice a week. Here's why. When people talk about dieting and nutrition, they're like, man, I have to give up everything? No. Yeah, no, it's not about giving up everything. It's about putting certain things on hold so you can look and feel a certain way. And I assure you, nothing tastes better than being lean and shredded feels. Right, Joel? Anyone who's ever been in 6, 7, 8, 10% body fat, I assure you, nothing will ever taste as good as that feels. I am a living testament and I will tell you that much for sure. There's nothing better than that. The confidence that it brings when you're in your best shape is untouchable. It's unstoppable, period. And it takes work. If it was easy, everyone would be shredded, 100%. Make no mistake. That's why you look around and three quarters of our population is obese and overweight. Look, let's speak eye to eye right now and pay attention to what I'm sharing with you. I love you and it's important. Take control and take care of your body. It's the only vehicle that you have. You can't go down to Mercedes or Volvo or whoever you want to go to and trade it in. It doesn't work. And what happens is our society is set up for you to fail. All the shit that's on the corner that's based on eating with chemical laden foods, it's set up that way for you to be addicted to it. Chemically, financially, there's billions of dollars that go into making sure there's seven crunches in a freaking Dorito. It's not done on accident. It's designed that way for you to fail. And unless you master what you're putting in your body and in your mouth, it's not going to happen. And you, my friend, are going to be at the bad losing end of a deal in the Western medicine system that is also designed to keep you in it. And I love you. And until you are ready to make a difference, it's not going to change for you. Cupcakes are, um, cupcakes are imbalanced. On my reward meal, I go have cupcakes. Matter of fact, I may go have seven or eight of them. It's not a sacrifice. The revolts, that's right. It's a sacrifice for sure until you get to that point. You realize how great you feel and how much different your life is, how much better your relationships are, your respect for yourself, how you feel, how you sleep, your energy, your medical bills go down to non existent. Like, let's be honest. I haven't been sick in 24 years. And it's only because I understand how to take care of myself. It wasn't always like that. No, and honestly, when I was in high school and stuff, I would go to do basketball practice and everything and then go have a bunch of milk and a bunch of pizza. I still do that sometimes, but not very much. That's right, Jake. So my encouragement to you is if you walk, I'm going to hit you up on those, on those uh, Joe's uh, cheese curds, Jen. So here's my invitation to you. If you walk away with anything tonight, give yourself permission to thrive. Give yourself permission to make a difference in your life. Give yourself permission to show up to your life. No one's going to do it but you. And make no mistake, it's going to take a conscious choice of you showing up. Which means you get to create a system of people in your life to support you. You get to have the wisdom necessary to make better choices. That's the only way you're going to grow is for you to have people in your life that you trust, that give you information to support you, that love you, and that are going to give you the truth, even if it hurts, lovingly. 
Okay? So make sure you have a reward meal. Make sure you have the wisdom necessary to make right choices. Because let's be honest. There's no fast way of doing this shit. There's not. So just get that shit out of your head. There's no pill you can take to make it faster. It's consistent work. Period. That's it. I've never seen anyone get there fast. The fastest I've ever got 50 pounds off of my body was in two and a half months doing the Atkins diet. And I was absolutely miserable that I didn't know my head from my ass when I was taking my finals in college because I was so mentally fried. Period. There's no fast way to do it. My encouragement to you is to create a healthy lifestyle with balanced foods, with proteins, fats, with carbs. Understanding how to do that. Understanding how fruits and insulin works in your system so you can be effective at making good choices. And if you're hanging around people who are constantly sabotaging you and putting foods in front of your face that know you're on your program, get rid of those people. They're trying to hold you back from being successful. Period. If someone loves you, they're going to be willing to support you and say, you know what, if I'm going to eat these M&Ms, I'm going to eat them in the other side of the room so I'm not around Jen or Brian because I know they're trying to do great in their program and I don't want to mess them up. Instead, if they know that and they're offering you that stuff, tell them to take a hike. Get the hell out of here. That's ridiculous. You should be supporting me right now in being an advocate of my health and as well as your own. If they're not helping you, they're against you. Take a look. Take inventory. You and I myself are the average of the five people that we hang around. We are the average of their financial capabilities. We are the average of their spiritual connection capabilities. We are the average of how they look and how they feel mentally and physically. We are also average in the same amount of money they produce. We are also average within our careers. All of that is accurate. Do the math and see who your friends are and you may require getting some new ones. Doesn't mean you have to get rid of the ones you have. Just means you may consider creating some new ones to have some different relationships to inspire you and move you forward in life. Give yourself permission to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Right, Jake Woodard? Because let's be honest. Can I be honest with you? Yes? <laughs> That's right, Joel. So one of the most important things for you to understand is this. The only thing that's consistent in life that is inevitable is change. The only thing that's possible and the only thing that is going to be consistent in your life is change. What does that mean? Unless you are consistently okay with giving yourself permission to be comfortable being uncomfortable, you're not going to thrive in a thriving environment. You're not going to thrive in a changing world because you're consistently living in fear opposition. Bless yourself. Vote your victory. Give yourself permission to move forward and to be comfortable being uncomfortable. All right. So here we go. So we talked about why is measuring important. It's important to get an accountability partner. I have multiple accountability partners. Joel's one of them. Ken Laney's one of them. Chris Vanberg's one of them. I have accountability people all over the house. And here's the deal. Like I'm going to be completely honest with you. I don't know. I can't answer that, Penny. I don't have. No, I don't know anything about you. So that's a that's a very. I, I I have to have more information on that, and that's all. That's all relevant to how active you are and what your body fat's doing and all that stuff. So check it out. Me being completely honest with you, I have. This is. I feel like I'm an eating anonymous. I have a big issue getting up in the middle of the night and eating food. Like sometimes I get up in the middle of the night and eat three or four times. My sleep is jacked up. I get up three or four times a night and eat, right? So I'm being coming clean with you. I'm being brown. I'm giving you a confession. Now, here's the deal. When my family, when Penny and Riley have sweets, they have cookies, they have candies, I tell them, do not tell me that you have these. Do not put them in plain sight. Put them in your room. I don't care. I've even considered putting a lock on my refrigerator at night so I don't get up and get... And get I'm get up and get up in the middle of the night and eat jars of peanut butter and jelly and all kinds of stuff. I will completely sabotage everything that I did during the day. And let me explain something to you. Willpower is not on will call. Here's what I mean by that. Your brain or your willpower battery gets used all day long for making decisions and being around business people and doing your business and your family and everything. It, unless you have stellar habits, you're going to fail. 
I measure my food out all day long. I track it all day long. When 10 o'clock rolls around, bam, my ass is getting up and eating almond butter and peanut butter after I've had everything that I've already required to eat. I am eating, and guess what? Here's the worst part. I don't even care. <laughs> I don't even care that I'm sitting there eating all that. I'm like, dude, you really are eating all this completely unnecessary. You're not hungry. You've already had your food. You're completely sabotaging yourself right now. And you knowingly are okay with that and unwilling and do not have the mental juice to shut it off. <clears throat> so... That's a little bit on me and some things that I experience on a day-to-day -day basis. And I honestly am really committed to probably putting a lock on my refrigerator at night so I can break my habit of getting up. Because let's be honest for a second. When you're asleep, your mental, sub your mental conscious mind is out of the picture. Which means that when we sleep, our subconscious is still running amok, still doing its thing, still doing its thing. And if you have habits or unresolved emotions... Resentment, anger, unforgiveness, whatever it may be. And I've done a lot of work and I have not consciously still found exactly what's operating. And I do a lot of work. I go into the flame finding what's going on actively and full of gratitude to do that. And I still have yet to find why I keep going up and doing this kind of stuff. So I, if I don't have some type uh, yeah, if I don't have some type of solution or resolution here soon, I'm getting up in the morning and going to get my body fat checked by one of my coaches at Ken's house at 6 a.m. to see where I'm at. If I have a challenge and I don't get any of the results that I'm looking for, I'm definitely going to put a hole in my refrigerator. I'm going to put a lock on it because here's the deal. I don't care what it looks like. <laughs> and I'll tell you, like, I'm interested only in being my best. The only way I can do that is to completely change the habit that I have somehow created by getting up in the middle of the night and eating. Now, let me ask you, what's your habit? What is your upper limits issue? When I say upper limits, has any of have you ever heard of upper limits? If you've heard of upper limits, say yes. If you have not, say no. And we'll finish up in here and we'll finish up in two minutes, three minutes tops. Have you heard of your upper limits challenge? No. Okay. How many other no's we got? No. All right, Heidi. Catherine. What? Good to see you back, Catherine. I haven't seen you in a while. All right, Lisa Locker. No, no, no. Joel, have you heard Upper Limits? What's up, Kim Myers? Isabella, hey. Miss Vanessa, my bold class. Audrey, I know you have. Superstar. Jake Water, this will be great for you. All right, awesome. So check it out. So here you go. Ready? Open your mind. What's up, Felicia? I haven't seen you yet, so welcome. What's up, Angelina? Or Angelia. Got it. And Carol. Okay, so check it out. Here we go. Here's an upper limits. Do you know that really the only challenge that we have is the upper limits challenge? Body limits, body limits, body limits. I will. I can't. Okay. An upper limits challenge or an upper limits issue is a sabotage. For example... When life is going really good and your relationship's going well and you maybe just got a promotion at work and all of a sudden you start having these sabotage thoughts like, well, you don't deserve it. Well, you know that time when this happened and, and this happened or, or you think you're fat and you don't deserve it. Guess what happens? There's only so much goodness that we can handle before we get uncomfortable with the new realm or the new emotional frequency or the new level of where we are going. That's right, drunk monkey. So what happens is our body starts to sabotage us. It starts to create friction. It starts to create rub. And it starts to create issues to drop us back down to where we are comfortable. That goes with where we're set financially. That goes with where we're set in our careers and our relationships, maybe the way that we're getting treated by our partner or the, maybe the way that we're treating ourselves. So as you start making changes in your life and you start having upper limits challenges, those are sabotage patterns because we don't think that we deserve that level of love or that level of comfort or that level of physical uh, fitness or that level of financial stability or that level of financial abundance, all of that. So the only limit that you have is your upper limits challenge. And allow me to explain something to you. We're going to go a little bit over because I'm on, I'm, I'm feeling good with where we're talking about. And I think this will be valuable for you. So I'm going to go a little bit over. If you have to depart, it's completely cool. I love you. Very important to understand. I'm going to, that's what we're talking about right now, Joel. So our environment all around 
is set up for us to have upper limits challenges because here's the deal. The people that be do not want a bunch of empowered, super conscious human beings on the planet because guess what happens? All the socialization of the power and all the commodities from the oil and gas industry and the electricity, that's all done. When you have a planet full of super conscious human beings and we truly understand what's available to us, for us, life changes immediately. The more they can keep us doped up on medications, the more they can keep us doped up on processed foods with neurotoxins and, and artificial sweeteners and artificial foods that affect your neural capabilities of sending out signals from your pineal gland in your brain, we are impacted and we are living in fear and we are living in lack and scarcity and there's not enough water and there's not enough food for everyone. That's shit. That's a lie. Period. We're, in, we're creating the image of God. Everything that we think of, we can create. It's just a matter of clearing up your system and creating a different operating system in your brain so you can make new choices and have new thoughts and ideas and understand skill sets and mindsets to create what you're choosing to and understand that you can, not you can't. Everything that's out there has been set up for your and my failure. My invitation to you today is to see past that. It's to wake up. It's to understand everything you need and everything that you require is available to you right now. And if you're truly looking to make a difference and you're truly looking to understand how to get through your upper limits challenges, I can help you with all that. All of the stuff that we put out from emotional breakthrough, from body language, from nutrition empowerment to how to reverse symptoms and illnesses, all of that is available to you. It's going to take a matter of you being like, oh, wow. This guy, Brian's kind of a knucklehead sometimes, but right now he's kind of making some sense. I see all the stuff on the news. Look at all the shootings. Do they ever tell you about what good is going on in the world? Fuck no. That's why I haven't watched the news in years. I don't even have cable. If you're watching TV, stop. That's the biggest waste of your brain space. And they don't tell you, they don't, they don't call it a program for no reason. They're programming you with what they're choosing for you to think so you can't think for yourself. But let me ask you this. If you're constantly in fear, can you be thinking about how God's going to bless you in your life and how God can function through you as you to serve and make a difference on our planet? Can that happen if you're operating in fear? Nope. It's not. So the better information they can put out there to help you, well, well am I going to go to work today? Am I going to worry about getting shot? I never have experiences like that. Every person that I run into is amazingly helpful and full of love and light. My encouragement to you is whatever you focus on, that's what you get. Period. I know I went a little bit off of our normal beaten path of getting in shape, but let's be serious for a minute. Where are you functioning at? What's showing up in your life? Creating a paradigm shift is right. And guess who that starts with? Me. And you. If you want to see a world change or see a change in the world, start with the man or the woe man in the mirror. Michael Jackson said it best. And I'm sure somebody said it before that. And it's a direct point. I can tell you that as I started doing a lot of emotional work on my own, man, I've seen people change dramatically. And you know why? Because I saw them differently. I already saw them in their own perfection because I was seeing myself in my own perfection. And everything is a holographic reflection. So when you see something you don't like, go internally and look at yourself and say, oh, wow, I notice I'm judging this person. Have you ever heard me say this thing? If you caught it, you got it. It's very true. I caught myself on the way home today doing that specific thing. Judging someone, then I said, oh, wow, I do the exact same thing. That is so amazing. So amazing that I can understand that and have the tool necessary to make a choice and change my behavior. And in turn, create a ripple effect of love and light across our planet, all because of what I'm doing in my own brain. Because you're emitting these frequencies and vibrations out of your body and out of your brain. And you're impacting our planet whether you think so or not. So my invitation to you is today is to wake up. It's to step up. It's to understand that everything in the world is not necessarily there for your benefit. 
Most of it's not, to be perfectly honest with you. And until you're ready to look through that and you're really look, really looking to see what's going on, you're not going to see it. I have something to share with you. This is going to be a little out of your box. Next time you roll by the Taco Bell symbol, check this out. There's three symbols around the building. In the Taco Bell, in the bell, you're going to see a, a vertical slit. It's a reptilian eye. And then you're going to see a six. So the bell where the little thing dings in it, there's a six in it. There's three of those around the building, which stands for 666. Look at it. That's satanic. Means you're looking at it and you have no idea you're being branded. If you think I'm joking, go to YouTube as soon as we're done and look up the monster video on YouTube. Type in monster666 and watch that. And then take a look at this. Watch how many times you come across these emblems in your everyday experience. And when you are awake, you will see it all. Every bit of it. My invitation for you today is to make a cho is to make a choice and to make a change and understand you're not on the planet forever. Disney does too. Disney is loaded with satanic masonry stuff. People we got a little off the beaten path. And actually, I think we're actually on to a path that is important for your soul and for your mind health of what you're actually on the planet for. Body fat will come along with you being awake and super conscious of what you're actually doing emotionally and what's going on in your life. That's a byproduct. Make a choice today to make a difference in your life. I've been seeing it doing my checkbook. <laughs> yeah. So I appreciate you. I honor you. I love you. I vote your victory. Hopefully you got some good value out of tonight. I went a little bit over than what I was expecting. And we actually took a little detour from where I was expecting. And here's the important part. I'm going to tie this all together for you now. Love you too, bro. Jake Woodard. I'm going to tie this all together for you right now. When you're trying to drop your body fat and you're getting and you're choosing to create your dream body, it starts right here. It's 90% mental. It's asking yourself the question, am I truly committed to being my best? Or am I going to continue being a sheep and being asleep? My invitation to you is this. You're obviously not a sheep or you would not be connected with me right here, right now, at this moment that we call now, which ultimately is the only moment that we have. My invitation to you is to do something today, do something now to start making changes in your life. What's up, Christy Graham? Start making a difference in your own life and watch what happens in your family. Watch what happens in your community. Watch what happens on our planet. The tools and the systems necessary for you to thrive, I have available to you. Period. All of our emotional breakthrough stuff will give you the skill sets necessary to crush your upper limits challenges. Every one of us has them, myself included. I welcome all of my upper limits challenges so I can deal with them, understanding them, and take my next step and get my next belt, get my next trophy, whatever it is that you choose. Everything that is necessary for you to thrive is available in this conversation with the systems that we have. Here's what I'm looking for. If you're serious and you're committed to your results, message me after this call. I'm going to have about five conversations and here's the deal. It's only for the first five people. I don't. I have a very limited amount of time and I'm only choosing to connect with people that are serious and committed about their life and about their results and that are willing to do the work. If that's you, message me now. Let's have a conversation and see if or how I can support you. As for the rest of you, I appreciate you. I love you. I vote your victory. My encouragement to you is to go back and watch this again. Because there's a lot of gold in this. Make no mistake. We're having a battle right now. 
And it's not a battle of your flesh. It's a battle of principalities and forces of darkness that you cannot see. Hence the reason why we started talking specifically about energy yesterday and started helping you to tap into what's available for you and to you. Wake up and open your eyes because God has a lot of things available to you and you can have a super amazing experience and it is 100% possible to experience and live heaven on earth now today. It's a state of consciousness as well as a physical place when it comes time for us to graduate. As for right now, we have some work to do. We have some work we get to do. That's all I have. Tomorrow, join me. Same time, same bat station because we're going to roll through the rest. This is going to be a four-part series. We're going to go through tomorrow. Let me give you a little replay or let me give you a little heads up forecasting of what we're going to talk about tomorrow. We're going to talk about controlling insulin levels. Insulin is your enemy and your friend. If you're having an issue losing body fat, it's more than likely going to have insulin involved with it. So if you're eating fruits and you're eating sugars and you're eating processed foods tomorrow, I have something for you. None of that's wrong. Excuse me. <laughs> Make sure. Be here tomorrow. I'm going to start going through foods specifically that help you with insulin. They help you with detoxification. They help your body to alkalinize your body. They help your body to function best hormonally. Tomorrow is when we get into all of that. You notice the last two days have really been about framework. Have been about tr helping you to truly grasp and to see the unseen that's operating consistently. Like this little gadget right here. You all saw me use this. If you didn't see me use this yesterday, go check it out. My training is still up. This is fascinating. And I assure you that if you have not seen this and this is new to you, go back and watch the training that I did yesterday and you're probably going to flip your wig. <laughs> because this thing still trips me out. I've been using it all day, making decisions and running through things in my head and using it on foods and using it on oils. And I assure you, God has a plan for you. He's using me to communicate to you right now of his plan of what's available to you. And unless you step up and open your eyes to what's available to you, you're going to get snowed. Our environment and our world is not set up for you to be successful. It's only going to come by you making a choice now to master your race. Give yourself the skill sets necessary to thrive. It's the only way it's going to happen. You have everything you need within your power to do it. I have the ability to help you with the skill sets necessary to do it. So for those of you ready to move forward, let's do it. Tomorrow, make sure you join me live, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. And look, I truly appreciate you. I truly appreciate you for stepping out of your box. And for those of you that are still on my call right now that's been here the whole time, you are the ones that this is for. People who hop on and off, they're not ready for this. I make a declaration for those of you that are still on my call. You are ready for this. And you are who God is speaking to now through me to you. So give yourself permission to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And let's do it. Have an amazing night. That's all I got. Remember, if you don't make time for your wellness, you will make time for your illness, ladies and gents, all day. Bye. I love you. Bye-bye.